Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome to part two of my Big Time Techno File button template explanation. Basically, this track has been made live during my live stream session. I create track from scratch. It's every two Monday, you can come around and participate. And yeah, last week we talked about the sound design and the composition. And today we're gonna talk more about the ID, the arrangement, the mixing and mastering. All right, so let's have a listen how it sounds. Alright, so let's talk about a little bit about global idea before to start with the arrangement part by part. Usually when I start a track, I always start with kick drum and the bass, maybe like the groove. And then I try to find the lead or something like that or a main element. And one of the main elements that came and was this lead. It's quite particular and unique lead, so I say, okay, this is gonna be our main lead. And then the idea was to have other part of the track with a lot of stab and like one shot element playing, entering each other. So for example, stab like this, you have stab like this, you have stab like this. All these kind of little sentences gonna pop here and there during the track. So I had basically the idea of having first as the intro all descent playing and kind of having the verse first. And then I will have a breakdown where I introduce this main lead and then I will uh, drop with the main lead and have this little descent again playing afterward. So I had more or less the global idea of arrangement in my head. Now I needed to add a bit more other elements. So that's why I had the, the voice after I had this kind of acid bass as well. I talked about this a bit last week, but yeah, I have my structure pretty much down and it was just about arranging things for them for the breakdown. And yeah, that's how it came up the idea and the track. So we're gonna go back to how I build it with the intro. So yeah, you can see like the global idea, you have the intro, then you have what I call the preverse or the verse because it's not really like the um, chorus with the main hook, but it's still like something pretty rhythmical and effective where you can dance. It's not anymore intro. <laughs> And then you have the breakdown and then you have the drop with the chorus with this special scent I said. And then I have like what I call it chorus two, but it's basically the chorus one and the verse kind of together. So let's say you have part A, part B, and then after the chorus two, it's like kind of part A plus B together. And then the final break and the outro. So let's go by one by one. I start the intro just with kick bass. You have the hats and uh, the pad playing. So this pad will set the mood. Add give a little bit of groove and then our low end. Here we start to have our little stab playing. Pretty quiet, the intro as usual. Then we have this reverse SFX. Alright, already we start to have a lot of things, horn sound. So then it's a lot of trial and error. You really have to make sure like all your scent play one after another. You you try to avoid to have scent playing in the same time because otherwise it's confusing. But having one entering another, that's what I do here. You can see uh, if I put like this, uh, you will have this one and this one playing. So this is a horn and this is more like a higher pitch scent. So they doesn't really overlap each other. But then after I have this one playing, and this one answer and then this one with the horn as well playing and then another one playing and so then the pattern is pretty much the same in terms of how the 
sent will play one after the other. For the verse, you can see now, now I'm adding an extra hat, this kind of shakering hat effect to add a bit more driving. You can hear that we start to put the voice. which at the beginning just play a single note pattern and then we're gonna introduce a bit variation later on just to make it slightly more interesting So here a little look at this is something I do a lot. I use an EQ, uh, this is kind of my master and I use the EQ with a look at here that I activate from time to time. It's usually perfect to go from one part of a track to another. It kind of let the listener to know that something is about to change, something is coming, it's about to change. The fact that you cut the low and then bring them back, it give as well an extra energy. So it just works well. It's a pretty common trick that's work all the time. And so here we introduce the ride as well uh, in terms of the ride. So just to give an even extra driving effect, uh, you have the voice pattern, which slightly changed now with this little variation. And then again, the stop pattern is still the same but yeah we have these things evolving and then we're gonna go into the breakdown <laughs> Right, so we goes into the breakdown in terms of transition how to transition from your verse to the breakdown to don't be too abrupt usually what i like to do well, i will usually remove the kick sometimes i will use the low cut first and then uh, i will remove the kick here i straight up remove the kick because sometimes it's work sometimes not here it was working and i removed the bass as well i still kept this but i'm slight i'm slowly slowly uh, kind of making fade out with a low pass filter you can see here with the low pass filter i make it kind of fade out slowly you can see that i don't have any more drums uh, playing and what's make it work as well is i have obviously the drone i have the horn playing so this is gonna kind of fill up the blank led by the kick and the bass you know it's kind of replacing this lower element you have also the main needs coming so it's kind of helping all of that with the transition and yeah then we go into the breakdown so let's play it and i will explain after So you can kind of split the breakdown in two. You have this first part here where you can see with all of the element where we're really gonna build up the tension. And then you have the second part where uh, the tension is kind of released, but we calm things down. But then quickly we're gonna re-bring re them back up uh, and then drop the sound. So here we have our lead playing uh, which is something new we have the drone as well is gonna kind of accentuate this tension you still have the voice getting a little bit louder you have the drone the filter is opening as well to kind of the more you open the filter the the more it introduces tension and one of the things gonna really help as well is i have on the mix down i have here this riser effect which is basically a lot of delay and reverb like kind of a big washout effect with a high pass filter as well so all of this kind of gonna elevate uh, everything goes up 
you have the SFX, we have the transition, but it's really like this kind of riser. If I remove it, you're gonna see how it's. It works as well, but it's missing this kind of elevating things. It's, it's still working a little bit because you have this uh, SFX here, which are who are helping you working. You see this kind of reverse noise. But yeah, the idea was to bring back up everything and then you cut straight up. And so you stop with the scent, you stop the lead and then you play the stab. And so here what's happening as well is that I have the lead and you have this stab as well who was playing uh, in the verse which are answering the main lead. And yeah, here I breed up everything, everything, and then when the stab play again, I cut everything. So like this, you really just hear the stab, and then the lead play again, and then the stab play again, but a different pattern. More like kind of a very repetitive pattern compared to this one was more like a spaced out. But again, what is happening here is again with this riser rack here, uh, I will have it going up, 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 and then I bring everything down. So when you hear, everything is going up. So that means like when the stab start to play, they are kind of high filtered. And then the more they are playing, the more we bring down the high filter. So it gets a bit more bassy and it add more dynamic and impact as well after later on. And then when you stop right after, uh, I have this kind of bar what I need to do something. And here what I decide to do is to put some clap. It just work well before the drop. You have as well this kind of reverse SFX, but they are very, very small. Like there, you, you can see that they are very small and it's like just a short reverse SFX just before the drop works uh, so well. The dynamic is kind of the same than the riser, you see. You goes up, elevate everything, bring down everything, and then go up again, and then go down again, and then drop. And that's what uh, makes the breakdown interesting because you kind of build tension and release. And yeah, it's a great way to introduce the main lead that you never heard before. And uh, yeah, then after we just goes into the drop. Alright, so in terms of the drop, uh, you can see no drums, just the bass and the main lead. Uh, you have some SFX and some horn as well because this is always working. When you drop, having this big cinematic kind of horn uh, always work. And you have obviously the main lead. One thing I've done here, so it's playing 8 bar and then you have a kind of a small break with this new scent never heard playing so this is something I had after because I thought it was a great touch to bring something new and fresh you know I didn't want it to again bring the exact same scent only that I was playing uh, on the verse I mean before the breakdown so I had this scent but also this one and it's just gonna add enough variation to kind of bring something fresh You can notice as well that the pattern played is uh, different than what it was before. Before was this one. So I'm, I'm still playing this one, but I'm playing as well a new pattern here. So yeah, just making things a little bit slightly different than uh, before, than the verse. So like this is not exactly the same again. But yeah, the global idea of answer and call from the scent to another, responding to each other is still the same. And then we're gonna progress and then progressively add some heart. We're gonna also add uh, the voice who is gonna be back. And uh, yeah, let's, let's just play. <laughs> So 
So here we have the Ride Extra Driving Effect. The voice is coming back. So here I've done something I, I like to do a lot during the track is that when you have this momentum climax where you have full of energy it's just to having a short break and then getting rid of all of the drums it's usually just work well here it's work perfectly and here it's work well because I introduced the voice so it's kind of a new part I call it chorus too but uh, you know it's quite a little bit of everything but yeah it's playing and then just for eight bar and then we bring back all of the drum uh, but it's nice because as well the lead is playing well it's kind of a second drop as well <laughs> And then we enter in the final break uh, so here what I like to do usually it's like I have the ride and as far as we enter in the final break I get rid of the ride so that's one driving element get uh, that I got rid straight up then usually I will start to low pass uh, scent and everything here actually I haven't really start to low pass nothing because I call it the outro but it's almost like uh, another verse because this part is not really like I, the outro because it's still very energetic you still have the voice and everything so it's kind of the final break but uh, yeah here we got into this this part you still have some stuff playing a little bit less uh, you still have the voice playing it's still a lot of hard <laughs> Yeah, slowly slowly starting to get rid of element like the drums one by one you know first was the right then was the shaker hats then was the open hats now it's just like that and uh, yeah using the sfx to kind of have the transition and yeah then after it's uh outro not much to say about it's classic outro and yeah that's pretty much for the arrangement all right let's talk about the mixing so usually i would tell you like 90 percent of the mix it's about sound selection and picking up the right sound that put together avoiding to have sent playing together that's what i usually say which is true but today we are in the case that there is a lot of elements and which are overlapping each other so there is a little bit more mixing than usual for that track but nevertheless still you need to always be careful with your sound selection Another thing that I often say is that we often think that the mixing is about the EQ, the compression, but a lot of it happens within you uh, leveling. So that is something that we often think is not that important, getting the element at the right level. I don't have any rule, even like, oh, what at what should be the kick and the bass. Uh, I do everything by ears. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, secret tips to give you. I don't think there is any secret tips. Each track is different. And the only way to get better is just to make more and more music. But yeah, once you get this right, you might still have some element overlapping each other. A great way to do that is to uh, pan them or like put them on the stereo field at different place. And that's what I've done here. A lot so for example the lead was too a bit too stereo so I recenter it with the weeds because I have a lot of elements which are stereo especially the stab as well so it's all about making decision about okay what I leave in the center what I put on the side the stab 2 is pretty stereo the stab 3 it's pretty mono but because it's kind of a layer with stab 1 and 2 but for example the stab 4 
you can see it's slightly on the right the stab 5 as well is slightly on the right so they don't play in the same time so I can pan them at the same spot it's not a problem what you have to avoid is to if you have two cents who are playing in the same time trying to pan them at the same place obviously but yeah after you see you have the cent one which is pretty much in the center this end pretty much in the center as well and then the horn they are usually the horn usually are very stereo so you might wonder how do i decide which sound i put stereo which one i put in the center which one i put slightly on the side there is some sound that are usually sounding better stereo than other let's say so for example the horn uh, i like them to have stereo they're always almost stereo uh, the stab to be honest on this track uh, i like them to have everywhere like in the center and the stereo because it's like this this big badass stab but then i like to have as well some popping here and there that can be more on the left or right then after it's where you find the space you know sometimes you have space on the left so you put it on the left sometimes you have a bit more space on the right so you put on the right so that's what i done because before mixing it was quite the mess everything already when i started to pan uh, it was way much better but yeah then i've tried to, for example on this tab to do some mid-side eqing for example for the stereo i have some other type of eq just this is usually to enhance a certain frequency of a sound like each sound have like a, a small frequency range where it really shine and I always try to spot it and to boost it a little bit and I do that when I feel like uh, one track is missing a little bit or like one track is struggling to really stand up and uh, in the mix so that's what I've done as well for this one here where I boost here I always try this depends per track but I will always try to cut everything I don't need especially in the low end but this also depends on the track because sometimes if I feel like it's okay I will not remove it here again you see boost this frequency but yeah I, I don't really do like crazy mixing effect chain uh, most of them most of my effect are sound design related for example here the saturation would be some wave shaper to add a bit of grit I use amp as well on other unison scent and I will add delay and reverb but this is not like uh, mixing so to speak it's more like the delay to add a bit of movement and the reverb is really to add character to the sound so yeah this is always a bit tricky the only thing with the delay and reverb you always have to be careful with the dry wet the feedback for the delay and the dry wet and the gk for the reverb because sometimes we tend often to put too much reverb or too much delay and uh, yeah sometimes it's great like if you feel like a sound is too messy to try to reduce a little bit some of this parameter but you always have to keep in mind that you don't want to lose neither the 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 vibe or the of your sound you know the character so it's a kind of a trade-off you have to find the limit yeah and then all of the other track you see it's always the same saturation delay reverb here i have the delay it's a has effect is to put the sound in stereo all right now let's talk about mastering so this is what i call homemade mastering i always recommend to have your track master by a professional someone who does just that someone who have like a room treated especially for that nevertheless i still think it's good to have a bit of knowledge you know if you wanna just put your track at the same level than the other track like if you wanna compare where your track stand but also if you're a dj and you wanna try it on a gig or or whatever can be great to know a little bit how to master it just to have it at the same level than other tracks so I actually made a mastering kind of rack to have a kind of a default basic mastering chain with some parameter I put it in the description if you want to find out more about this rack but let me explain quickly what I've done for this one so I'm gonna take the louder part of the track Here I have some glue compression I usually have a very slow attack to let the transient pass I also have an EQ as an input so like this is not my kick and my bass triggering the compressor because what's happening if you don't put an EQ with a low cut uh, basically your low end is gonna trigger the sidechain because it's usually the part of the truck which got the most energy and I don't want that to trigger the, the compression I want to have a global compression so by cutting this low end that's not what's gonna trigger your compressor but it's more gonna be like some scent which are higher in terms of peaks than other and uh, yeah it's just getting few peaks okay then so keep in mind this is like a, a template mastering chain so it's not like your perfect mastering but again this is kind of things that i feel was working well so here i will have an eq with i will cut the what i would say like the muddiness here it's around 250 and i will boost around one kilo three kilo 
This I feel like is like the the frequency that uh, usually add a bit more clarity to your track. So that's why I boost them as well here a little bit. Uh, then you have this device that I didn't use, but you have this channel EQ here is just gonna be a high shelf to boost the high, just to make things a bit more uh, brighter as well. <laughs> Kind of rebalancing a little bit and then i have utility just to put everything under 120 hertz in mono and to enhance a little bit the stereo but here it's very slight it's gonna be more enhanced by uh, this mitsai eq unfortunately ableton doesn't really have a stereo image or like a good one uh, so you kind of have to try to use the mitsai eq to enhance i'm just boosting a little bit more the side here but uh, yeah it's not like a perfect stereo imaging but yeah it does the job and then i will have two saturator which just gonna add a bit of harmonic you can see it's like 50 percent amount <laughs> Then you have this color limiter, so this is just to add a bit of warmth, uh, it's gonna add a bit of, I don't know, it's just enhance the sound a little bit better. <laughs> It's very subtle, it just had a little something to your sound. And then I have two uh, limiter. I use two like to have a kind of a, a more gentle um, limiting. I have one first cutting a little bit of peak and then another one. It usually sounds better than having just one like cutting everything. <laughs> this is just for loudness purpose. And uh, yeah, overall you got... You master and um, yeah that's pretty much it for today thank you very much for watching i hope you like it if you want to grab the template the link in the description it's a great way to support me and see you soon bye bye